Minister, President, Your Excellency Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege for me to be among distinguished personalities and have the opportunity to present my government's view on our perspectives toward the Mediterranean. At the outset, I would like to warmly thank the Begin Sadat Center and the Benai Breed International for organizing this international conference. Professor Efrem Bal and the Bar Ilan University for hosting this important event, as well as for the kind invitation. If one asks worldwide, what kind of people are the Greeks? The most probable answer is a maritime people. Indeed, this is the truth. The sea is within our DNA and our relation with the Mediterranean Sea, especially the Eastern, goes back to the Minoan Kingdom and to the Aegean civilization around Santorini. It is true, the Mediterranean Sea, that the Greeks have traveled for trade and knowledge and came in touch with the peoples of the South, Southeastern and Western shores of the Mediterranean. Nevertheless, we have never approached it as a mare nostrum. We have rather and always seen it as our privileged highway, one of communication, cooperation, commerce and prosperity, but also as our privileged milieu in order to stop invaders and defend our freedom. Today, the Mediterranean is opening to us its death and uh, offers as many additional possibilities to cooperate and to create. Interesting to notice that this is not the will of all who live around the basin, but it is centrally, certainly the will of the three democratic states in the region in the east, Greece, Israel, and Cyprus in the West, Italy, and other countries. It is up to these democratic states, with the assistance of the European Union and our Western allies, to make it happen by working for stability. Greece, which is the only country of the Eastern Mediterranean to be a member of both European Union and NATO, a country of strategic importance for the three seaborne trade and the energy flow to Europe, with a shipping industry that definitely possesses a global influence, will do its utmost to achieve this goal. I will try first to identify the threats to stability that appear in the Eastern Mediterranean. Then, I will present the recently undertaken efforts for bilateral and regional cooperation by Greece. Finally, I will sketch out some of the basic outlines for our future policies. Threat to regional stability. These threats are of state and non-state nature. Obviously, the primary threat is coming from ISIS, Daesh, and its criminal and terrorist activities. It is this source of instability that relates to the second, the war in Syria, which in its turn is related to Turkey's neo-Ottoman revisionist and hegemonic ambitions. Other sources of instability I consider to be the spread of nuclear weapons, asymmetric threats, and regional competition. Daesh jihadism. Daesh is the primary threat to regional stability as it threatens the very essence of state organization by proposing a different and obscure form of social structure and international behavior. The unique Islamic jihadist philosophy of Daesh is the nihilistic and missionary refusing any other kind of threat and any kind of coexistence with anybody who is different. Its nihilism is barbaric, 
by any ecumenical human standards. Slavery of big parts of population, especially women, national religious and other minorities. Destruction of art and monuments of universal cultural heritage. Export of hate, terrorism and violence against and armored civilians. In terms of geography, Daesh has already reached the Mediterranean shore. By expanding this, its influence in Libya and by inspiring terrorist action in Tunisia. Thus, besides combating this scourge in the areas under its control, policies should be adopted and action undertaken in order to prevent its growth in Libya. Similar states should find ways to, of coordination and cooperation in order to stop Daesh inspired groups and activities in the Saharan and sub Saharan area in Africa. The war in Syria. The war in Syria takes place and devolves in the Mediterranean shore just next to Israel and across the Sea of Cyprus. First of all, let me clarify that neither this war, not the war perpetrated by Daesh are class or civilization types of war. They are wars resulting out of the competition of regional powers or extremist group to which I will refer further below. Consequently, and second, the war in Syria is not a war that has resulted out of big powers or Zionist involvement as it is usually through by the average person of the other side in the region. It is the result of competition by other regional powers, not Israel, Greece or Egypt, competing for political, religious and economic influence. Indubitably, the war in Syria must end. The destruction and the suffering are so extended and so great that this continuation makes no sense and makes no honor to 21st century humanity. Yet, a viable solution should be found in order to avoid solutions and influences of external factor that may warm regional and international stability. Ending this war will give the opportunity for reconstruction and for ending the greatest since Second World War humanitarian crisis, which has become so heavy for neighboring states and Europe. In conjunction, let me now turn to Turkey. Turkey is a NATO ally to Greece. Greece is aspiring to become a United Union member to which the Republic of Cyprus already belongs. Turkey, on the other hand, for more than a decade, benefited from its alliance with Israel. Yet, its policies and behavior towards the, uh, these three democracies are far from being friendly, far from being in accordance with the international law, and far from being of a stabilizing nature. Turkey continue its not aligned behavior towards Greece by create friction and issues in the Aegean in the southeastern European environment, and lately, by deliberately pouring hundreds of thousands of refugees and immigrants in European soil. It is still maintaining illegally and occupying forces in Cyprus hinders the progress of negotiation in the islands and try to block the exploration and exploitation of natural resources in the Mediterranean. You in Israel know very well how Turkey behaved in December 2012 and January 2013 when the Republic of, Sao of Cyprus announced the uh, discovery of hydrocarbons in the Aphrodite field. You also know about the behavior towards your country, its involvement in domestic issue and support for anti-Israeli organizations, the, fo uh, the, the fomenting the anti-Semitist uh, feeling in Turkey, its indiscretion in areas of sensitive information and technologies, 
and its maximalistic demands in order to normalize relation with Israel again. I have in their line that Prime Minister Davutoglu said to his parliamentary group on December 22. I felt honored on behalf of my nation to witness the hoisting of the Palestinian flag at the United Nations. Inshallah, good willing, that flag will one day be waved in Jerusalem. Whatever is wrong for Palestine, it's wrong for us too. Prime Minister Davutoglu, 22 December. Turkey, neo Ottoman ambition, expand, as you very well know, from Bosnia and Herzegovina to the Mediterranean southern shore. Turkey has hindered the 2003 Allied operation in Iraq and has undermined the UN embargo against Iran. Worst, it has initially allowed the formation of Daesh by permitting the passage of extremists from all over the world going to fight for, for this organization and the, the transfer of weapons. Then, it has hospitalized jihadists it has undermined the efforts of the West to fight Daesh. It has bombed the Kurdish forces fighting against it and traded with them, thus strengthening them. Moreover, after many long years trading with Syria, training units of Syria's army, and after the Erdogan family spent vacation with Assad, it has been involved in the Syrian war against the Assad regime. Last but not least, it has tried to create an international crisis between NATO and Russia by downing the Russian aircraft, and now it also hinders the progress of peace talks in Geneva. Nuclear proliferation. Greece is observing the issue of nuclear proliferation in the Middle East and the Mediterranean shore with great discomfort. The agreement on the Iranian nuclear program, whether one likes it or not, is for the moment a reality. And what is important is the monitoring of the agreement's full implementation. More important, is not to monitor how this agreement and the medium-term perspective of a nuclear Iran are going to be perceived also by its regional competitors. In fact, such a perspective gives important incentive also to Turkey to go nuclear. As you all know, Turkey has nuclear ambitions that were made public in the AK peace program before 2002. It was the election in 2002. Turkey, as in pub publicly known, want to build two nuclear energy power facilities, one in Akoyu and the other in Sinope, on dangerous seismic ground. Of course, right now, it is not certain how fast the construction is going to proceed, given the friction with Russia, but uh, the important is, however, it's that the ambition is there. Regional power competition. This is another threat to regional stability. It is understanding that the regional competition is primary between Muslim states and is expressed in two conflicts, the one in Syria and the other in Yemen. It is characteristic that in both conflicts, Turkey has sided with Saudi Arabia, while in terms of religious influence over the Muslim in Europe. Turkey is competing with Saudi Arabia. Of course, this competition and these conflicts are often wrapped up in the paper of primarily religious competition. Yet, it may be seen that Turkey, Iran, and Saudi Arabia are competing for super, uh, supremacy in the region and they win the Muslim world, each one pretending being and projecting a different model of state organization, and each one promoting its own economic interest often related with hydrocarbons and pipelines. The competition is also expressed in the arms race between the three with relevant weapons program and very high defense spending. In the last 
10 years, Saudi Arabia first, Turkey second, and in some years Iran third, in each one spending in constant price more than Israel, to which an effective defense is an absolute condition of survival. Other smaller Gulf states are also participating in this arms race, as is the case of Qatar, recording a very high per capita defense spending. And the question are where this competition with Iran is going to lead the Sunni alliance. And again, who are they going to turn once the two conflicts are over? The same thing is with Hezbollah. Cooperation. On a totally different theoretical and practical approach, Greece, close, constructive and peaceful cooperation with Israel is relatively recent. Uh, recent. The coalition government of Syria and Danel, and did continue since 2015 to expand and deepen this relationship. On July 7, 2015, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Greece visited Israel and met with Prime Minister Netanyahu. On July 9, 2015, I visited Israel and met with Defense Minister Moshe Yalon. During, uh, during this visit, the Chief of General Staff signed another agreement of cooperation. Further, at the end of October, beginning of November 2015, the Hellenic Air Force, together with United States and Polish Air Forces, participated in the Blue Flag exercise, the largest air exercise organized by the Israeli Air Forces. The Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras came to Israel on November 25 on a two-day visit. He met with Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Rivlin. One of the results of this visit was the opposition of Greece to European Union guidelines concerning the labeling of goods produced in the post-1967 areas in Israel. A trilateral political <laughs> a trilateral political consultation meeting at the level of Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel and Greece and Cyprus was held in Jerusalem on December 17, 2015. On January, to, on January 26 of this year, I received Minister Moshe Yalon in Athens. On January 27, the second high-level intergovernmental bilateral conference took place in Jerusalem. And finally, on January, January 28, 2016, the trilateral summit took place and adopted a declaration. As you very well know, Greece has made similar steps towards cooperation with Egypt either at the bilateral or at the trilateral level with the participation of Cyprus. One may find the main element and area of cooperation in the declaration of the Trilateral Summit of Athens of December 9, 2015, and may conclude that the two trilateral declarations go at the same direction and try to respond to the common strategic challenges of our region. I should finally add that our concerns for the region took me also last January on the 23rd to Amman, Jordan, where the idea of cooperation and stability dominated our discussions. Future. The test of any future agreement is, of course, the implementation of the existing ones. Their implementation is also the criterion of our credibility and determination, especially when other actors from and outside the region are not always happy with our peaceful and development-oriented initiatives. We should encourage the private sector also to engage in this implementation and reap the fruits of our efforts. Furthermore, we have to expand our cooperation with the addition of other willing states from the southeastern Mediterranean. We need to work together at the international level in the direction of peaceful settlement in Syria to support the negotiation under the United Nations auspices in Geneva with the participation of all actors in Syria. We must continue combating terrorism of any nature and support other states that they are trying to deal with the threat of Daesh and other extremist terrorist and fundamentalist organizations in the region. We have to support Cyprus in the negotiation in order to end the Turkish occupation and to find a solution which is functional and viable.
This means that the Turkish military forces should leave from the island, that, uh, that there will no longer be guarantor powers, and that Cyprus will be able to exploit of the benefit of all its citizens, its maritime natural resources. Finally, dialogue on the basis of international law and practices, increased understanding, and build trust, leading thus to solution. This is that way advise our friend in Iran, the Arab world, and the Palestinians. Despite its name of Barcelona process, and with full appreciation for the Spanish contribution, I would like to remind that the decision for a comprehensive and without exclusion Euro-Mediterranean cooperation has been taken under the European Union presidency in Corfu in 1994. Furthermore, when we established the European Union Common Security and Defence Policy in 2003, our first move was to invite our Mediterranean partners, without exclusion again, to participate in this new peace and stability effort. All this demonstrates, beyond any reasonable doubt, that the allegation supporting our defence cooperation with Cyprus, Israel and Egypt in bilateral or multilateral terms as directed towards one or another of our neighbours are completely erroneous and do not do justice to our initiative, which, I repeat, is solely aiming at promoting peace, security, cooperation and regional development through the Eastern Mediterranean. Ladies and gentlemen, Greece, Israel and Cyprus do not aspire to create or participate in an axis of evil. We have seen and continue to see the consequences of confrontation, extremism and war. Our aim is to create together with all those who share the same values and principles and without exclusion an arc of stability, cooperation and prosperity extending from the broader East Mediterranean area to Black Sea and beyond. You must imagine an arc from Israel to Cyprus, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania. This arc will stop the extremists of Islamic terrorism who want to come in the West. Yeah. Our adversaries are not states or people and religion, but extreme ideologies and unhuman practice which incite hatred and destruction. Our strategic priority is to create a better place for our peoples and future generations to live in peace, security and prosperity. In area of cooperation and progress, our East Mediterranean has been a cradle of great civilization, of religious tolerance and coexistence, and it can centrally become a springboard, springboard towards a better future, mainly for our youth. We should not allow any more lost opportunities no more lost generation. Thank you very much for your attention.